Hi, welcome back to Lam Rim. Uh, good morning. And it's early here in Arizona. I guess it's late wherever you are, or or something else. Uh, we're going to start today with a meditation, and I had to think about what kind of meditation to do today. And I I thought to teach you guys a, a special thing that we do in the monastery. Okay, so. In the Geshe course, uh, you have to debate at an average three hours a day, four hours a day, something. And uh, it's out in the hot sun in my time, and, and it was really hard. And then sometimes it's under the stars, and it's very beautiful. And I, I can remember being in a debate, and Orion rose over my opponent's head, and it was very beautiful. And uh, so, you're not allowed to take any papers to the debate ground. You, you have to memorize everything before you step into the debate ground. And you have to memorize every day, you know, enough material to debate for two, three hours. So you get very good at, uh, they teach you these methods of uh, short-term memory. And then you sort of uh, clear it before you go to bed, and then the next day you start over again. And... Uh, there's a process called bhavana, right? Bhava, bhavana, say bhavana. bhavana. So Sanskrit doesn't really have a V. It's like between a V and a W, ba, ba, bhavana. Yeah. yeah, and bhava uh, comes from the root bhu, which means to become. Uh, it's different from Buddha a little bit, because that's a bhu, and this is bhu. So bhu, bhu becomes, it, it's the source of the English verb to be. And so bhava means to be. And then ana, uh, when you add it to bhava, bhava, bhavana, it means to make you into something. The ana is an er in, in English. Or we have it in English, like politician, musician, the an, it means the person who does something. So musician is a music player like Ben Gibson, or politician, and then a bhavan, bhavan, bhavan is a someone who becomes something. Their specialty is to become something, and that's the Sanskrit word for meditator. That's that is the word for meditator. Uh, so it's not. I don't know where meditate comes from. Maybe reach a medium state or something. But but bhavana, meditator. Meditation means uh, to become something, to turn yourself into something. And there's a special skill in the monastery. I haven't taught it for many years. We taught it in New York many years ago. Uh, we, I think we did some kind of uh, impermanence meditation, but Lam Rim meditation. But, but there's bhavana, meditation, means you burn a pathway into your mind. So you, you take a new series of ideas, like a roadmap. Uh, like we had a roadmap to get, with the GPS to get down here from uh, Sedona. And uh, we went a new way, and we had a, a GPS. It was very beautiful. Uh, we went the back way through Lake Roosevelt. And, and uh, so on the GPS, you get the next piece of the map, right? Oh, we're going to take you to Pace, to Pine? Pine, and then Payson, and then Strawberry, and then Roosevelt, and then Safford. You get each uh, piece of the road map. Oh, Tim, I'm going to try to talk slower today. Uh, okay. It's just that Gelsey makes really good coffee. Okay. Uh, so... Each piece of the roadmap, you get it on the GPS one by one. Uh, and that's how we're taught to meditate in the monastery. So you take pieces of a larger idea, and then you learn the pieces. And then you, then you try to visualize the whole map in your mind. So you start with pieces. Like, here's how to get to Lake Mary. And here's how to go to Payson, and here's how to go to, what's the other one? Pine. And then here's how to get to Strawberry. And then uh, slowly you start to connect them together 
until you can visualize the whole route in your mind. And so you learn the pieces, and then you uh, learn to connect them. And then you do that trip in your mind over and over again. And that's called bhavana, because you make the trip mentally over and over again. And then it burns itself into your mind, and it stays. And then we can say, you learned it. <laughs> it's a cool idea. So you take the pieces, you practice the pieces, then you start connecting pieces together. And then you practice doing the whole thing. And then you keep doing that whole thing over and over again, and it burns itself into your mind. And when it burns itself into your mind, and you can close your eyes and go through the whole meditation easily, you become that. You become that meditation. You see what I mean? And, and then you, the, 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 the road becomes part of you. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful idea. Okay, so that's the first part of what I want to start today with you guys for this retreat. So I'll teach you how to burn the pieces into your mind. And then I'll teach you how to do the whole route. And then I'll teach you how to repeat the route. And then I'll teach you how to internalize the route. Okay? And then you become that thing. And that's what Long Rim is all about. In this case, you would burn the different methods of reaching bodhicitta, each, each part of the path into your mind, then you would try to repeat the whole thing. And then you would do it several times, and then it would become part of you. And you would reach bodhicitta uh, because you burned it into your, into your mind. That's the first half, OK? <laughs> then there's the second half, which is mnemonics, OK? M -N E M O N I C S M N. It's a strange word in English. You don't pronounce the M. It's uh, M N E M O N I C S. Yeah, mnemonics. Uh, and those are uh, we use them in the monastery. Those are memory assistance, memory triggers, memory triggers. Okay, and that's a cool thing to burn the route to bodhicitta into your mind, you make a story. You, you make up a story. And you base it on something you experienced already in your life, OK? Like when I memorized the, I memorized the first three chapters of the Abhidharma Kosha before I knew Tibetan, before I learned Tibetan. I could recite three chapters of the Abhidharma Kosha. In fact, I recited it for Ling Rinpoche uh, one time in the car, and uh, the senior tutor. And, uh, and the way you do that is you use pictures uh, from your life, something that happened previously in your life, OK? And then you, each picture represents an, a different idea. So that's called, we're going to use, I'm going to teach you this method that we use in the monastery to, to bhavana, to burn uh, a series of ideas into your mind so deep that you become that. And it's very beautiful, okay? And, and it's based on mnemonics. So you, you have to choose a, an event in your life. And that meant a lot to you. I'm thinking, Kat, like having your children or something. Uh, and you'd probably remember a lot of the details. And, uh, and then you connect each one to a concept. And then you're, you're not going to forget what happened that day. You're going to remember the, the thing. This happened, the water broke, then we ran around, and then we decided not to go to the hospital. And, you know, and then each uh, event, each part of an important event in your life uh, stands for something else in the meditation. And, and that way you don't miss anything. And, and then slowly that gets burned into your mind until it becomes you. And that's the purpose of meditation. That's what meditation is for. So we're going to try it for bodhicitta, OK? So here we go. Don't, don't think it's too complicated. It's not too complicated. And it's, it's really easy because you have to choose some big event in your life, 
okay? So, and it's fantastic when you're teaching, okay? When you're teaching, it's an important tool because uh, you actually don't need notes. Uh, you, you just use your mnemonics, you know? So I, I would like to review the first class and I would like to review the important ideas of the first class that we had yesterday. And I'd like to do that in a meditation. And I'd like to burn it into my mind. And so I'm going to use a mnemonic, OK? So there were five main ideas in the first class yesterday. And when you teach a class, you should try to learn to break it down into the main ideas for yourself, just for yourself, so that you don't have to keep looking at some paper or something like that. So there were five main ideas in the class in the first class yesterday, which, which covered the first two of the 10 benefits of bodhicitta. There are, I hate to say benefits, 10 cool things about bodhicitta. And we covered two of them. We got to two of them in the first class. So I'm using mnemonics, OK? And there were five pictures I chose for you guys yesterday for the first two classes. And, and the pictures were, I don't know if you guys have it available, I don't, or maybe not. You do? Okay, first picture. It was tennis player. Yeah. And then the so first picture was a tennis player. Second picture was a graduation, right? Third picture was a dad hugging his daughter. Fourth picture was Geshe Michael. <laughs> I mean a donkey. And then... Uh, the fifth picture was these uh, skyscraper makers. And that was the whole class. That was the first class. Those are the five important ideas of the first class. And if I want to meditate on the first class and burn it into my mind and then become that, which means reach bodhicitta, uh, then how can I remember those five pictures? And so for me, I went to my high school. Uh, I went to my high school, and I walked around my high school, and I connected uh, events to, I connected parts of the high school to, to the first class that I taught yesterday, okay? So tennis player was easy, because I was on the tennis team, and, you know, that was at the tennis courts. Then I walked over to the football stadium, which is where we had our graduation, you know? And then I walked down to where I met my parents at graduation, and they hugged me, you know? And then I walked by, uh, do you know FFA? Yeah. Future Farmers of America, where they used to keep their animals. That's where the donkey was waiting for me. <laughs> and then uh, they, they uh, did some construction on my high school at, at the gymnasium, and so I, I could remember the, the construction, okay? so. I'm going to go through that. And so there you have, you have the five main ideas of the first class. You have the whole first class in your mind uh, by connecting it to some real event in your life, some place you have been or you remember well, okay? So here we go. We're going to turn it into a meditation. And you got to use your own place, okay? Like your high school probably didn't look like my high school, so... All right. It could be the birth of a child. It could be a house you used to live in. Okay. And it sounds a little complicated, but it's not. And, uh, and then you become an extraordinary teacher also, because you don't have to look at notes. And, and you can actually think about what you're saying. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> so as usual, we'll... Try to relax your face, relax your mouth, relax your eyelids. Sit up straight. One way to sit up straight is to push down, which forces your chest and head up. It's always a good idea to tighten your lower abdomen. And the way you do that is uh, on your exhales, 
you can use your exhales as an excuse to tighten your lower abdomen. And that tightens your, that strengthens your back muscles. And you can sit up straight, you can meditate longer. So let's take 10 deep breaths and the exhales are very, very long, uh, much longer than usual. So at the end of the exhale, your tummy tightens, which strengthens your back and you can sit for longer periods of time. Hands are any comfortable way the goal with the hands is to keep them out of the picture, keep them out of the way. Just park them. <clears throat> I don't mind the sun, it's good. Now let's go through our five pictures, okay? For me, I'm gonna use my old high school and I'm gonna start on the tennis courts and think of a young, young man who's happy because he just got a position on the tennis team. And what that represents is the first benefit of bodhicitta, which is you, you join the team of Mahayana people. Again, it's not a Mahayana Buddhist school. It's a group of extraordinary beings who have had the experience of leaping from planet to planet and meeting people every living being on each planet, tens of billions of beings uh, on each planet. It's a very, very uh, special team, a uh, very select group of people called bodhisattvas. And if I could burn this bodhicitta meditation into my mind, I could join that team. How would that feel?
next uh, go to a place that you remember that will remind you of a graduation. Okay. For me, I, I walk from the tennis courts of my old high school over to the football stadium. And that's where we had our graduation. What's the graduation picture mean? It means that the second benefit of bodhicitta, they will give you a title. You will have a new title. Uh, they will call you Bodhisattva Gyalse, Bodhisattva Alex, Bodhisattva Kadeng. It's like a PhD title or a doctor title. Now, the beings in the universe who are extraordinary, they will always talk about you as, as oh, that Bodhisattva Jigme or that Bodhisattva Tim. You will change your identity. Firstly, I like to spend about 10 breaths, 10 slow breaths on each part of the path that I'd like to burn into my mind. The next idea we learned was that you get a second title, which is Gyalse, uh, daughter or son of the Buddhas. And for me, I'm thinking of a picture where my, after my graduation, my, my mom and my dad came and hugged me. And so a picture of a father or mother, Buddha, coming to give me a hug and welcome me into their family. Now I'm their son or their daughter. And of course the Buddhas love everybody, but once you have jumped between planets and met all the living beings and made this commitment to help them, directly to them, <clears throat> made the commitment directly to them, each, each one individually, then you sort of join a new family. And you are welcomed into that new family. It's a very tight-knit family. And the Buddhas have a special feeling for you. Then in my high school picture, I, I go from the football field where my mom and dad hugged me after graduation over to a part of the high school where there were kids learning to be farmers and they had donkeys. 
And that donkey reminds me that we don't have to be geniuses or, or moral geniuses to become a bodhisattva. We don't have to be the smartest person. Uh, we don't have to be the best person. Uh, we can be ourselves. We have lots of problems. We have lots of weaknesses. We have addictions that we have not been able to stop. And we have all kinds of bad habits. We treat other people sometimes not very nice. But still, uh, we can become a bodhisattva. It's, it's independent of those things. We can have that experience. We can have that dream. Maybe the worse we are, the better we can dream. So even a, the text said even a donkey or a fish or a bird, someone without great intellectual qualities, someone who's a normal person who fails from day to day, week to week, even in our practice. Uh, but still that path is available to us. We can become a bodhisattva. Then the last picture for me at my high school is I go to the gymnasium and they build an extra top on side of, on, outside the gymnasium. And I imagine a skyscraper, people sitting on a piece of a skyscraper. And that reminds me of this event in, in my life where it seemed like a whole building was moving, shaking, actually jumping from side to side. And that reminds me of what happens when any person jumps from planet to planet and reaches bodhicitta, becomes a bodhisattva then because the karma of the whole universe is linked together, the karma that created the physical galaxy, those karmas are all linked together. I'm, I'm also responsible for Mars. I'm responsible for the sun. I'm responsible for Buddha paradises that I heard about. And if my relationship with every living being changes suddenly, then that jolts the karma that created the galaxy, and the galaxy jumps and trembles from the weight of this new kind of love that I found. Okay. The galaxy is the creation of my mind, my karma. And it serves all living beings. If I decide to serve those same beings, then the galaxy has to jump when I do. And people on some level, all, all, all people, and especially all Buddhas are aware that one of, the, one of us in the galaxy just became a bodhisattva. So imagine the day that you become a bodhisattva and the galaxy trembles.
and let's dedicate to good karma, that everyone we know could become a bodhisattva. And then slowly open your eyes. Take a stretch. Cool. Any questions about anybody here in the room? Small questions? Poco, poco pregunta. Uh, yes, um, my question is, when the earth shifted for you, was that your becoming a bodhisattva or some other being that you experienced becoming a bodhisattva? Me personally? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, if I felt the earth shift under, under me, did that mean I became a bodhisattva or did it mean that someone else had become a bodhisattva? Uh, bodhisattvas don't talk about it much. <laughs> but uh, if it happens uh, if it happens to you you will uh, you, you'll you'll know and you'll be very happy how's that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay any other questions nah let's get to work Enough fun. Uh, by the way, uh, in a practical sense, uh, just a warning, okay? You, you can't, you can only do about five scenes at a time. Like, don't try to do 10, don't try to do 20. You'll go, you'll get weird. You'll get nervous and You'll get overloaded and you'll get grumpy. Uh, do do five pictures well. Like take choose a high school or some event in your life and, and do the five well. And the next day do them again. And the next day do them again. And in the meantime, this course is going to keep going. And we're going to cover many other pictures. And you, you won't have time to do all of them. So don't get... Uh, Frantic. Don't be one of those frantic meditators. Uh, you know, it's like, I'm not making enough progress, you know? Like, just calm down and do your five pictures, you know? And uh, learn, learn them well. And burn them into the mind. And, uh, and skip the ones you didn't have time to do. And then pick up on the five pictures like three days later. That's okay. And then... You know, you're going to forget the first five pictures when you do the second five pictures. Uh, and then you'll feel frustrated. You feel like, oh, I'm not making progress. I've, I already forgot the five pictures I started with three days ago. And don't think like that, okay? When you go through five pictures, you are burning something into your subconscious. And it will always stay there. It will always stay there. And it, the second time you do it, it will come up very fast. And the third, you know, like years later, you'll be teaching Lom Rim at Diamond Mountain and something you burned in there 40 years ago will come up. And that means it's part of you, okay? Everything you think of is, becomes part of you, whether you're conscious of it or not. So nothing is wasted. No energy is wasted. Newton was correct. Okay, all right. Here we go. We're going back to our class. Uh, I'm a Dana, I don't know, D-E-S-N-A, Ch, C-H-O-S, right? That's where, I, that's where I am in the text. Okay, I guess Tim get there. Don't worry about it. Dana Chipong, Chipong Geti Shitongi, Ningbo, Nguanzin, Di Nile, Me. 
Ngunzin is an interesting word. Say Ngunzin. Ngu means the face of something. Zin means to hold it. And Ngunzin means to identify somebody or recognize somebody. And he says, if you want to Ngunzin, Ningbo. What's Ningbo? The The heart. If you would like to identify the heart of the Geti Shitong. Geti Shitong means 84,000, okay? And this is a tradition from the Abhidharma that says that Lord Buddha taught 84,000 pumbos, skandhas, mountains of dharma, okay? Like how many teachings did Lord Buddha give? We have 990 books uh, in John Brady's database spoken by Lord Buddha. Uh, but that's a... That's about 184th of what he taught on this earth. So he taught 84,000 different mountains of teachings. Uh, Why 84,000? For $100. Um, There's 84,000 mental Yay, $100 to Janice. Yeah, there's 84,000 different negative parts of your mind. So Buddha had to teach 84,000 different Heap, and there's a big debate about what's a heap of scripture. One opinion is that it's the amount that a magical elephant could carry called Rupten, and uh, that's a big story, but long story. But uh, anyway, he says if you wanted to uh, identify Munzin, the essence of the 84,000 mountains of teachings, millions of pages of teachings, it's nothing other than what I just taught you. It's the five scenes at your high school. <laughs> okay. You want the essence of every sutra and tantra ever taught? It's bodhicitta. Okay? It's to be a bodhisattva. It's, it's, if you had to choose one teaching from the 84,000 huge groups of teachings that was the heart of the Buddha's teachings, you wouldn't find anything better than those five pictures. Okay? All right. Somebody asked uh, Lord Atisha, which here is called Joje, which means the Lord, right? Uh, and they also call him Hla Chik. Who can guess? Hla Chik. Yeah, the one angel. Nice. 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Cat. Okay, Jingmei, don't forget. Uh, I was going to say 20 bucks, I just didn't have time. Uh, yeah, Hla Chik means the, the one divine being. So sometimes Atisha is called Hla Chik. He's called the one angel, okay? It's a beautiful name. Tlachiki Kyang, he said, look, give up on this life. Focus on Champa and Nyingje and Chanchukisim, which we're going to talk about in the next retreat. You know, focus on the steps to getting to Bodhicitta, which is love, compassion, and then Bodhicitta, okay? Kona. Just focus on that. Don't get distracted by anything else. Just do that, okay? Mm. I think it's important to say what does it mean when Atisha says, give up on this life. And I remember, uh, you know, I, I've, I've seen so many strange things in Dharma teachings. You know, I've got like 50 years of Dharma teachings that, I, that I've been to. And uh, I remember... Uh, we were in New Jersey, and we were kind of out in the countryside, and uh, there was a, like a few acres of, of woodlands, swampy woodlands across the street, okay? And uh, this is called Freewood Acres in New Jersey. The rest is all gasoline refineries, but uh, there was this one little probably polluted swamp, and uh, one a student in the class, the Ken Rinpoche said, Sendi le tongue, give up on this life. And he packed up his house and he moved across the street into the forest. And uh, 
he lasted about two days. And Rinpoche was so funny. He just said, leave him, you know, he'll, come, he'll be back in, in a day or two. And the guy struggled back after two days. He said, I need a house, I need a bed, I need a refrigerator. You know? So it doesn't mean uh, quit your job or divorce your wife or tell your kids to go away. It doesn't mean that. It, give up on this life means, look, your projects, all the projects you do, right? Alex has a new project, you know. And look, guess what? Sometimes it's going to go good, and sometimes it's going to go messy. And sometimes it's going to be smooth, club de oro. It's sometimes it's going to be very fun, and then sometimes it's going to be a total headache, and nothing goes right. And de le give it up, you know, just relax, okay? Look, that's the way it goes. That's the way sansara is. You know, you try to raise money for stupa. You have a medicine booth teaching. Then suddenly everyone's confused, upset, and you're like, okay, just relax, okay? Everybody just relax, okay? Things mess up in samsara, okay? That's the way it is. Just relax, have fun, lutong, you know, give it up. You know, focus on whatever happens in your project. That go, things go well, things don't go well. The only thing that matters is do you love the other people in the project? That's all that matters, okay? Maybe the money will come. Maybe the money won't come. Maybe we'll succeed to buy the storage facility. Maybe we won't succeed. But the main thing is, the only important thing is, love the other people in the project. And then, then it's successful, okay? Because it's never going to be smooth. It's never going to work all the time. Just get used to it. That, that's what it means to give it up. Give up this idea that success is the project makes money and there's a big stupa. And give up this idea. Uh, success means the people in the project are feeling deep love for each other. That's success, okay? That's what Atisha said. All right. Kona, that's all. All right. Uh, we have reached the fourth benefit. Who can tell me the first three? Uh, I, I can tell you number two. Come on. <laughs> uh, Where did the high school start? Yeah, tennis player. Yeah, you joined the team. Oh, joined the team. Then you get a name. Or you call, you call the voting. Yeah, you got a name. And that one okay. in, importantly includes a hug from your parents. Yeah. And then what was the third one? Oh, this is the encouragement stage where any idiot can become one. No, it's something else. No, we only covered the first two benefits in the five pictures. Oh, okay. There was another benefit oh. yesterday. Well, one was a review from last time, last summer. Yeah. We covered three. Yeah, but what was the third benefit? The third benefit is that it's a silver of diamonds. Good, yeah, outshining. Silky number, okay? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, a bodhisattva outshines millions of nice people, okay? Nice people are nice. But a bodhisattva, I'm sorry, it's just different. It's a different level. They're jumping from planet to planet, directly helping billions of people. It's, it's nice to fundraise for something. That's nice. It's a good thing. But, it's, but a bodhisattva is a different, it's a totally different level. It's billions of times bigger. You know? and, and it's more efficient. If you could reach that, you could help billions of people and not just a few, okay? So that should be a goal, right? And you can do it. All right. Mm. So now's the fourth benefit. We have a picture from Pao Pachi. I don't remember who it is. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I like this picture because I'm trying to open a coffee shop. It's <laughs> I'm loving all the county inspectors. Uh, nothing is going right. Uh, and what's this picture represent? So burn it into your mind, okay? This is the fourth benefit. Uh, and it's that if you do become a bodhisattva, this is so cool. I, I have to say it correctly. If you do get to be a bodhisattva, 
tiny little things that other people do for you who don't even know you're a bodhisattva become extremely heavy karma for them. Okay? So you're just a powerful karmic object and nobody knows. Okay? Somebody makes you a coffee. Uh, it's going to take them to Buddha paradise for a hundred lifetimes. And you can't go telling people that. You know, they're going to think you're an egomaniac, right? Oh, thanks for giving me a hundred dollars. Now you're going to go to Buddha paradise for a thousand lifetimes. I mean, it, you can't say that to people. They'll think you're just trying to collect hundred dollars. That's right. So, but the fact is, if you become a bodhisattva, then tiny little things that people do for you, you can have the pleasure of knowing that little things that people do for you are going to cause them intense lifetimes of happiness just because of who you are. It's, it's very sexy, right? <laughs> because of who you are. Uh, and you, don't have, you can't tell people, right? They just say, oh, you're just trying to get more coffee. You know, uh, but you can ha enjoy deeply uh, the pleasure that because you're a bodhisattva, when somebody else helps you or even somebody, I don't know, puts gas in your car or something, that they're going to go to some paradise for lifetimes because they did something for you. Because you are... A, You've, you have had the experience of helping billions of people. So you're a heavy karmic, you're much heavier karmic object than their parents or anything like that, right? And that's just fun. It's just fun to be a person like that. You know? Then you kind of find excuses to, to have nice interactions with people because it helps them. You see what I mean? Uh, so somebody tries to cheat you or, or screw you or something, and then you just find a way to turn it into a nice in interaction. Uh, and then it helps them. And it's really fun. Somebody tries to cut in the line in front of you. And you say, yeah, go ahead. You know, I, I, it's nice to see you. And uh, that, that gives them intense good karma. So it's nice to be that kind of a special karmic object anonymously. Right? You don't tell them. You can't tell people. But you can quietly rejoice all day. Just for, I don't know, politicians who, who create your internet or your roads or strange people. You can rejoice in strange... What do you call that? Politicians who want to be famous, who only want to be famous, but they're still helping you. And then you can, you can enjoy that they're helping you because they're making such good karma. You see what I mean? Like that. All right. Here's the text. Shipani. If you're able to get the bodhisattva's state of mind, bodhicitta, you become someone who is worthy of the... Of the People should throw themselves on the floor around you. It would be appropriate. But, but that's the fourth benefit, okay? You become this kind of person. Thamir uh, means even the devas, even the superheroes from Marvel comics should be throwing themselves on the floor, okay? Chak chak cure. What? Okay, $50. Worthy of prostration, Sanskrit. Word, worthy. Come on. Arch, arch, archat, archat. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> there's another, okay, for another $50, there's another way to read arhat. Arihat, arihan. Yeah, enemy disturbed. Yay. Okay, fifty dollars. Jingmei pay Jingmei fifty dollars. <laughs> Bow down to yourself while you're at it. Okay, Jar Lavan Chipi Chipi Shing Chok Tigir. You become Shing Chok. Shing Chok means uh, highest 
person in the room that people could make offerings to. Okay? And again, of course, you don't announce that. You don't run around and say, hey, anyone who gives me a pizza is going to Medicine Buddhist Paradise. You know? It doesn't make you popular. Okay. Uh, okay. Next picture, you guys. By the way, now you see why I like to use pictures, because I use them for my meditation, and I, I use them as meditation triggers, okay? Memory triggers, okay? This is a lady, uh, professional diver, uh, professional Olympic level high diver. And there's a cute story why I met this lady. Uh, so I, I, when I went to Princeton, I didn't know anybody outside of Arizona, nobody. And I got off the plane and uh, I, went, I went and asked someone, how do I get to Princeton from John F. Kennedy Airport? They said, you have to take a private plane. They cheated me. You actually take a bus. And uh, so <laughs> I took a private plane. It cost me like, you know, nowadays it'd be like $2,000. And, uh, you know, Went there, and I was so naive, you know. I lost half my money the first day. And then, uh, you know, I showed up in a suit, in a green suit, yeah. that my mother said everybody at Princeton would wear. And <laughs> everyone was dressed in tie-dye, and they had long hair, and it was the hippie times. And I, I like, took the suit off in, like, five minutes, you know. And then I, I remember I went to sign up for my room, you know. And uh, I got an assignment to a room. They said, you're staying with three other people, you know, in a suite. And I said, okay, you know, and I went there. And I knock on the door, and these three beautiful girls come out. And I'm like, is this my room? And I said, they said, no, no, you can't stay here. And I'm like, no, look, it's my room. <laughs> they were the Olympic divers going to Princeton, you know. I got a scholarship to Princeton. Anyway... Unfortunately, the school figured it out that it was a mistake. <laughs> and, uh, but I never forgot the professional diver thing. Why, is, why are we showing this picture, Geshe Lama? Come on, get to the point. Kadam Gome Kyang Gom Sugre Dung. He starts to talk about how much hard work and discipline it takes to have the Bodhisattva's experience. He starts to talk about how much hard work and discipline it takes to have the experience of jumping from planet to planet, okay? And, and I think it's important that we get this lecture from Pabonka Rinpoche. You know, look, it's fun to jump from planet to planet. It's fun to be the kind of person when someone offers you a coffee, they're going to go to Buddha paradise for like 10 lifetimes. That's all beautiful stuff. But look, and it's like the warning on the cigarette package, you know. It's hard work. It does, you don't get there easily. It takes years of hard work. You know, people ask me, I guess I just want to do mantras. Uh, I don't want this hard work. I don't want to study for year after year, you know. Uh, here's Pabonka's answer. The greatest lama of the past century, I would say. Kadam uh, Gome the first Buddhist in Tibet, the Kadampa, called, called Kadambas, they used to say the reason people are practicing Tantra, Diamond Way, with a special Buddha deity and a Dengyu Ngak, a special mantra, the reason they, the reason we gave those people a, a Tantric Buddha to meditate on and a mantra to do is because they were not capable of learning the Dharma. Okay? <laughs> it, I didn't... Some gyu chu shig mepe len. The problem was they couldn't meditate. So we gave them that. You see what I mean? Now, of course, it's an exaggeration. Okay? Of course, it's an exaggeration. That's what teachers do. They try to shock you. 
Sugme, Drame, Time, Rome, Rekja, Me. There's nothing to see, nothing to hear, nothing to smell, nothing to taste. Of course there's something to see. There's French fries. Uh, you know, but they try to shock you. So the early Buddhists uh, used to say, why is this guy spending all his time on uh, some secret uh, tantric Buddha or and on some mantras? And they said, well, it's, it's easy it's to explain. He didn't have anything to meditate on. So they gave him that, you see. So he didn't have a practice. Uh, so they're criticizing that the lazy, it can be laziness, right? Uh, they're saying, look, if you want to be a bodhisattva, which you should be, it's hard work. And it takes a lot of hard work. It's like being an Olympic level athlete. You know, it takes hours of hard work every day. It doesn't come easy. You know, if it came easy, then everybody would be jumping from planet to planet. It's fun, you know, and it takes discipline. It, it takes practice. You got to practice. You got to work hard, okay? Uh, and he says... Uh, Every chance you get to hear a little bit more from about the bodhisattva, every chance you get to hear a little bit more about what is a bodhisattva, you should grab it. You know, if, if you have a choice between uh, running to the bathroom during this class or waiting until the class is over, wait until the class is over, even if you're uncomfortable, because during that pee pee time, you might miss some seeds, some bok chucks, okay? Like, try to get every little sentence you can about how to be a bodhisattva because, because it's, not, it's never wasted, right? Chumisawa, one of the four laws of karma, is that everything you ever experience has an indelible effect on you at some point. So try to expose your mind to high words, high ideas, every chance you get, uh, because they will have an inevitable effect on you uh, to become a bodhisattva. So keep, keep trying to learn more and, and be disciplined. Tupatsam chung yang ne che te, extremely important. And Tim, I know I have one more minute. I'm, I'm, the, I'm on it. Okay. Ngar sangye ke sung ki da tupa tsam ki ngamba ngap gya sa ke ne demba tong. Every little thing you expose your mind to in the Dharma, every sentence from the Lamrim, every time you do another mantra, you are planting. Somebody asked me, a, a, I don't know, it's a silly question. If I say mantras in my planting seeds, if you go to the bathroom, you're planting seeds, okay? <laughs> <laughs> mantras is a little bit better. Of course you're planting seeds. Very powerful seeds, extremely powerful seeds, okay. And he gives an example. There was a flock of 500 ducks flying over the Buddha when he was giving a teaching one time, and they heard his voice, okay? And because of that, it planted a seed in their hearts. They were born as devas, you know, in, the, in a temporary paradise, and they all saw emptiness after that, okay? <laughs> because they didn't go to the bathroom during the class, <laughs> okay? They... <laughs> They heard that one more sentence from the Buddha. Uh, they heard him speak. They just heard his, they were attracted to the sound of his voice. They didn't know what he was saying. But they thought it was beautiful. It sounded like another goose or something making nice quacking or something. And because of that, they put seeds in their mind. So he says, you know, work hard. Every single opportunity you get to hear something more, take it. Without getting nervous and, what do you call that? Stressed Dharma people are the most unpleasant thing, you know. 
Don't be a stressed Dharma person, okay? Relax. You know, sit in the class. I had a person who loved to lay down in the class. I, if you be in the class, it's better you lay down than you not be in the class, okay? And you hear something, and that will put seeds in your mind, and they will inevitably affect you later, okay? So work, you have to work hard, you know? Don't think Lamrim is a waste of time or studying the garden that gives me a headache. Of course it gives you a headache. <laughs> But uh, I'll tell you something from 68 years old, okay? Uh, there's nothing valuable in this world which doesn't come with hard work, okay? It, 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 to get something valuable, to get something precious, it takes hard work. It takes discipline, okay? All right, see you in the next class, you guys. Take a break.